We live in unprecedented times. While the pandemic has been a driving force of change, shaping our homes, needs, workplaces, industries, it has also led to many transformations in the field of medical education, such as providing that much needed push towards synchronous and asynchronous electronic learning. We live in an, er in an era where significant reforms in medical education are taking place. In order to be able to make effective contribution to these changes, it is crucial to comprehend and grasp the basic of medical education. And the book titled Journey of the Healers, authored by our very own Professor Indika Karunathilaka, does exactly that. So without further ado, let me invite Professor Indika Karunathilaka, Professor in Medical Education at the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo, to share with us his journey of authoring this publication and an overview of his book titled Journey of the Healers. Thank you very much, Jessica. Uh, during this uh, very brief presentation, what I'm trying to do is actually to take you through the journey of the healers and briefly discuss the landscape of medical education in Sri Lanka, of which this uh, book is based on. Perhaps the Western medical, medical education started uh, around 5th century BC uh, in the Greek city called Kos, and you know who is called the father of modern medical education, Hippocrates of course. So medical education has come a long way since then. While medical education was developing in Greece, Rome, and maybe Middle East, at the same time, medicine was thriving in Sri Lanka also. This photograph from Mihintale, the monastery hospital, and also Alahana Piribena, there are enough ample evidence. And the eminent surgeon and medical educationist, Prasad Juru Alvihare, would give you so many examples of how medicine and medical education went together in Sri Lanka. The Western medical education started in Sri Lanka around 1848. Not in Colombo, actually it was in far north. It was started by American missionaries who wanted to start a medical school in Colombo, but they were not allowed to land in Colombo. So they went up north, started the first, first medical school in Sri Lanka in 1848 in Manipai, Jaffna. However, that medical school didn't last very long. So the first organized medical education actually started in 1870, again as a response to a crisis during that time period, where due to an epidemic, so many people were dying and the British colonial rulers during that time period thought that we need to produce medical doctors in Sri Lanka to face this crisis situation. So that is how the formalized Western medical education started with the start of Colombo Medical School, a very humble beginning at the Colombo General Hospital during that time period with only 25 students and three teachers and one principal. That's how it started. And since then, medical education has come a long way. We have the first student of Peradini Medical Faculty, whose surname is Abe Kohn, with us. So that became the second medical school in the country. And then came Jaffna and Rohuna, Yardhanapura, so on and so forth. At the moment, we have 11 state medical schools and there's one medical school under the defense ministry. The most recent being the Faculty of Medicine, University of Moratwa. Previously and more recently, then there's Sabaragamo as well as Fiber. Uh, so adding into the all, all other medical schools in the country. Initially, medical education in Sri Lanka was along traditional lines with initial subject-based introduction to the basic sciences, then into the pathological sciences, and finally move into the clinicals. This is what we call the traditional medical education. However, in early 90s, the medical education was going through crossroads and changes. 
and world was moving towards innovations in medical education through more student centered more problem based more integrated more community based more elective and more systematic approach in medical education as opposed to very subject based very teacher centered previous approach and many pioneers who initiated this in sri lanka they has very strong relationship with slme as well as with the kalamu medical school and this renaissance in medical education started in 1990s and uh, experts like dr pali tabekon was also very much involved during that time period and in the kalambu faculty of medicine kalambu people like professor lalita mendis professor nandudas kodayapada professor rojay singh professor rohini sirnath all of them getting together in 1995 the faculty of medicine kalambu became the first medical school in sri lanka to move towards more integrated more student centered more innovative curricula based on the spices model since then several other medical schools one milestone was uh, the international medical education conference held in year 2000 when we were joining as junior lecturers to the faculty of medicine kalambu under professor alta mendis with that inspiration and motivation several other medical schools have moved towards more innovative curricula the faculty of medicine kalania then the faculty of medicine uh, medical sciences university of sijawardenapur coming in and converting their curricula into very integrated module based system based curricula and other medical schools are, are slowly changing into more innovative more student centered curricula and that is also been inspired and also maybe motivated by introduction of the sri lanka qualification framework as well as the need for accreditation of medical schools where professor rangya swardhan will be going into details so now many medical schools in sri lanka follow this kind of integrated curricula where from very early on the students are introduced to clinical sciences as well as application based medical education and also community based medical education not only that to ethics communication professionalism areas like that previously which are not very much focused in medical education so medical education is changing worldwide from very early on when they started basic sciences medical many medical schools nowadays they start teaching early introduction to the clinicals as well as professionalism communication skills and those areas as well and also sri lanka is very fortunate in having a very huge and large resource of patient based care therefore because the access to patients lot of clinical material not only for clinical skills but learning all other competencies that are related to medical education learning empathy professionalism bedside care all these resources so our students ministers i am very happy that they are here also you are very lucky because we have a huge amount of resources in sri lanka as far as clinical teaching material is concerned so that's a huge advantage not only that sri lanka is a pioneer in public health Sri Lanka's achievement in public health is world renowned. So, community-based medical education is not a new area to Sri Lanka. So, that's another very important area when it comes to medical education. So, how this is regulated? How the quality is assured? How these courses are accredited? That is where the Sri Lanka Medical Council comes in. Today, we have the head of the accreditation into the Sri Lanka Medical Council, and also. the member of sri lanka medical council and the accreditation unit both uh, dr palita bekon and professor surangi aswarde so that's another very important area especially with the new international regulations related to related to accreditation of medical education where recognition of the medical degrees becomes very important the formal recognition of medical degrees would be very important when it comes to a practice of global medical education not only that when you are going for post graduate medical education also the recognition of the medical degrees becomes very important so what are the challenges in medical education there are so many changes learner profile is changing practices are changing explosion of information changes in health system and changes in disease profile learners are changing we have students here the students numbers are ever increasing with increasing number of medical schools not only in sri lanka but outside sri lanka also 
One example, if you take an extreme example, India has over 600 medical schools. So in that way, it could be a tsunami of medical students. And our current day medical students are generationally different. They are what we call digital natives. Now we are digital immigrants. Okay? So that's very important, the advanced use of IT and technology. The current generation is very much technologically savvy. And multicultural, different behaviors, different cultures, different contexts, all these changes are coming to play. Healthcare practices ever changing, the technology, increase in cost, diversity of providers, and increased public expectations, professionalism, they expect a lot regarding professionalism ethics, with the advent of social media, there is the margin for error is very much reduced. And there is commercialization and commodification of healthcare. Okay, so all these areas. Now, medical practice is ever changing. And that has been accentuated by recent changes like the COVID-19 and the current crisis that we are facing, the economics, for example, will we be able to import enough medicines for the country? Will there be enough investigation material? All these challenges come into play. The health system is going to change and it's going to change in the way that it's never been previously. So not only technology, not only those advances, but there's other end also. This is high tech end, but on the other end, the current challenge that we are facing or the, the thinking or the main concern nowadays is will the hospitals have essential drugs? For the next few months. So, so many challenges. How can we adapt our medical education to face all these challenges? Explosion of information. So much information is coming in. Information is in our fingertips. So, can we teach everything? It's not possible. Okay. And the human resource challenge. Okay. At the moment, uh, the number of doctors registered should be Sri Lanka Medical Council over 40,000. About approximately 30,000 doctors are practicing in Sri Lanka. And generally, about a doctor population ratio, 1.5,000 population. But it doesn't actually mean much because what matters most is the is a distribution of doctors. One thing that we have to remember is in every year, at least 1,500 or even more doctors are registered in Sri Lanka Medical Council. And with opening of new medical schools, it would be even more. And the rate of migration, we don't know with the current situation what it's going to be. So at the moment, the government is absorbing 70% of medical graduates. Will the government be able to continue that? Especially with the current situation, with the economic crisis, and the infrastructure development and the expansion being hampered, will it be possible? Okay. So, and the private sector expansion also may not be that sustainable in that current situation. So we are facing challenges. We are facing a lot of challenges in the health system. This is the health expenditure. It might go on even more, go down even more. So a lot of issues. Migration. Right now, many are considering leaving the country. I don't think that should be the solution, but there are many who are contemplating. So we have to face all these challenges. COVID-19, pandemics, how to face these challenges. So it has changed the landscape entirely in Sri Lanka, not only medical education, but the health system landscape was entirely changed due to COVID-19. And the current situation is going to change even further. Okay? So all these crises have been, affect, have been affecting the medical education. There were several incidents where private medical education uh, was introduced to Sri Lanka, but all these incidents, because in Sri Lanka, free education is considered in a way, quote unquote, sacred. Okay? So in that way, there is uh, the free education and free health is guarded very strongly, especially among student community. And students are always at the thick of these areas because see, they see that the system that they have been guarding and safeguarding fiercely have been challenged, even if you take the current situation. And it has impacted the medical students also, and as well as medical education. A lot of students are undergoing stress. Okay, this is a, a result of a recent survey. However, are there opportunities? Yes. One thing is development of medical education. Now, it's a very strong specialty discipline, which is own science, 
in this audience also there are some of our own compared doctor is kashi is also specialized in the medical education it's a it's a emerging discipline with its own database science and research innovative teaching methods can we use these to face the current challenges teach professionalism ethics special technology uh, during last communication conference it was mentioned that slma alone developed 700 videos during the covid times so that is seems humanly impossible but again that shows how much could be done and all these material are meant for continuous professional development cpd is also a very important component of the continuum of medical education and the new technology the virtual reality augmented reality simulation all these areas should play a huge role in medical education and also video conferencing telemedicine now uh, dr palita bekon was mentioning about the integrated patient care management where many of our students were taking part and that gave them a huge experience now dulanjay ji and men who has coordinated this activity and many others this gave you a huge experience in medical education and pace in the current situation not only that how to adapt medical education to the needs of the country and the emerging needs now there is lot of focus on quality assurance and standards increasing emphasis on quality assurance the world federation of medical education at the moment the medical council is working on getting the wfme accreditation for sri lankan medical degrees we are professor rangya swardana will be talking more about you and the sri lanka qualification framework to ensure the quality of the medical education and the university education so all these are there so as again like dr abey kon mentioned ultimate beneficiary should be the patient they want better accessibility to health care acceptable cost care in and skilled doctors lesser waiting times and how can we cater for that how medical education and health system can cater for that especially in the light of current situation that's our challenge because they are the beneficiaries they should be the beneficiaries so there need to be a continuous improvement in quality of training and medical education we need to safeguard the foundation of free health and free education because this could be one area which could be heavily debated in days and months to come not only because of the impact but even because of the solutions also would feature what kind of future the free health system and free education would have so those are areas for discussion continuous professional development is very important in this situation and infrastructure and health system changes that would adapt so we are facing challenging times we are facing interesting times i think we need to adapt so with that i conclude that presentation however this was based on the book that we are about to launch the journey of the healers past present and future it was actually based on a series of newspaper articles that i have with me but that that proved the that provided the content basis uh, in a way this was actually the lifetime work is a summary of the lifetime work not only after i have joined as a lecturer in medical education but during my time period as medical student and even before so all this is summarized into this book on journey of the healers and i, I have that many who have helped me supported me first uh, who have helped me to develop this series of articles uh, mainly they were published in the sunday morning newspaper and uh, there are many who have supported me then my colleagues in department of medical education and faculty of medicine and also the uh, faculty of medicine teachers association as well as a federation of medical teachers with whom we have worked related to several issues in medical education from where uh, i was inspired again uh, working with the medical students uh, the medical student union and other medical students during different issues in medical education we have worked very closely and uh, with the sri lanka medical council medical association all of them have helped me and uh, i will not be able to mention all the names but the all the names i most of the names actually mentioned in the in the preface of the book but i thank all of you for the support that is given and i had to especially thank the state farm civil corporation for their financial support and dr chandana tapati for coordinating that and special thanks should go to uh, dr palita bekon who has gone through the book and written the forward and dr bjc perera as well as dr ashwini diabru who has written the forward and also dr charni kohbangi who has supported me to uh, write the initial articles and very specially 
my family, my wife Sujiva and two children, because uh, I have taken a lot of time in writing this book. So uh, they have given me the freedom and the peace of mind to focus on this work. Most of the time uh, we are out of the homes and we are focusing on, on these areas. So thank you for big thank you for them. And my parents, my father and my mother, who are not with us at the moment, but uh, whoever I am, it's because of them. So the credit and the gratitude and dedication should go to them. And above all, the people of this country, all this work is dedicated for them. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So let me now invite Professor Indika Karnathilakar to commemorate the launch of the book titled Journey of the Healers by presenting the very first copy to our chief guest this evening, Dr. Palita Abekon. It's actually a privilege uh, to present this first copy to Dr. Palita Abekon. So I would like to present the first copy to Dr. Palita Abekon. Then I would like to present the second copy to Professor Rangya Swarthana. Then I would like to also uh, invite some of uh, you from the audience, Professor Chan Disorisa from uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association, and also to represent the students and also because uh, he has actually uh, done this very beautiful cover, uh, Imalka Virasundara who had just finished the final exam, and Dr. Chandanath Patu also. And I invite uh, Dr. Professor Ishan Nisoisa and uh, Dr. Chandanath Pattu and uh, Imalka, uh, you are still not a doctor till your results come. So, yeah, please. <laughs> Uh, I request other books to be distributed among the audience. The books are here, they'll be distributed and, and the soft copies will also be available uh, uh, soon after this meeting. And we'll be informing and uh, all the participants about the availability of soft copies which are available free of charge. Thank you, sir. And congratulations once again.